Good to see everybody. Hope y'all had a good day. Thanks for everyone joining us online and all y'all being here uh, with us. Uh, let's stand up. You can't sing this song standing down, st sitting down. You got to stand up. Standing on the promises. Y'all help me now. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. On the second. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Amen. That's good singing tonight. I'm glad we have some promises to stand on. I sound real loud tonight, and uh, maybe they'll get that straightened out in just a minute. Well, let's open in a good word of prayer. Brother Don Hightower, would you open us and ask God's uh, blessing on the service tonight? Let's take just a minute, stand, and greet one another. Let our guests know that we're glad they're here. Just remain standing. We're going to sing a verse of There's Power in the Blood. All right, y'all help me out. Here we go.
tonight, and uh, so I wouldn't forget it. All right, well, I still feel like I'm really, really loud, so y'all get that worked out, and while I'm preaching, please do not explore on them, uh, on them keys up there, because it went crazy the other night, and uh, man, I think it scared us all. I thought the Martians had invaded, amen? Well, amen, there's always going to be trouble in, in the sound systems and all that, but I'm glad we got the best of the best on the scene up there. Let me ask you guys to be praying, uh, ask the church to be praying, uh, Kyle and Larissa uh, are at Emory Hospital, and uh, we had to pray that God would move in the heart of uh, Emory or... Uh, uh, Piedmont because Kenneth Stone said that that heart cath and the nature of her brain bleed was just too tedious and serious and so uh, Emory accepted her they've got a bed and uh, so would you pray at 7 15 in the morning for Larissa Altman her and Kyle uh, she's going to be there and they're going to do that heart cath and she's still having chest pains and so we need God to work a miracle out then also there's a family I want you to pray for Linda and Craig Hall they have contacted the church and uh, they just need some uh, prayer, and uh, they just need some hope in these uh, uh, times. They've got some issues that they're dealing with, health struggles and uh, uh, some other struggles. So I want you to pray for the whole family. And then uh, I want you to pray for David Nickel. He's doing better, and uh, he had uh, a case of seizures yesterday is what they're saying. And so uh, anybody know a latest on Brother David? All right. Good. Good. Wow. Well, that's a miracle. I called early this morning and I talked to Miss Brenda Nickel and she was praising the Lord that he was talking and back to his normal self and feeling much, much better. I'm going to tell you, church, we're going to get to heaven and we're going to see God has answered our prayers. And if we would only pray a little longer and pray a little more faithful, I believe God would really do some great things in our lives. I want you to pray for the 10th family to join. Uh, I really believe God put it in my heart to see 50 people saved out of the ministry of this church this year. And right now, we're at 30 or 31 people that have been saved. Young people and adults have been saved, and that is wonderful. This year alone, and it's only April. And uh, man, I'm telling you, I believe the best is yet to come. And I began praying, and God put in my heart 24 new families. We've had nine families join already, and I'm praying for the 10th family. And I want you to ask that God would give us favor in the eyes of these visitors. I had some very good visits yesterday. I got to meet Brother Barry, and uh, uh, he was off work yesterday, and uh, Taylor, right, the Taylor family. And I got to meet him, and uh, we hope to see him in the days ahead. Good to have Miss Kathy and Miss Casey with us tonight. And uh, listen, there's no accidents in the providence of God. Can I get an amen right there? I was trying to find Brother Herbert Hitson. This is a fellow that's been visiting our church, and he moved from Lake Widawi, and he moved right over here about just a couple of miles from the church. And I pulled in the driveway, and I noticed it said Casey on the mailbox, but I pulled in anyway because I saw people looking out the window. And, uh, and I pulled up, and it was an elderly couple, and they belonged to another church. I believe they said they belonged to Tabernacle. And uh, they said, you're a preacher? I said, yes, ma'am. And they said, well, you sound like one. I said, well, I is one. Amen. And, uh, but they said, would you mind just staying a minute? And I knew they were, they were needing something. And, and old uh, Mr. Casey, he's uh, 80 years old. And he said, preacher, my eyesight's just going. It's fading. He said, used to. They could give shots. And uh, anyway, he said, would you pray for me? And listen, there's no greater honor in all the world than to pray for somebody. And so we had a Holy Ghost prayer meeting right there on the carport. And I told him about Lily. I said, listen, there's a God in heaven that touched a young girl. And, uh, and it's just a miracle that she has her sight right now. And I prayed in such faith. I just believe that the hand that hung the sun, the moon, and the stars was going to touch that man's eyes. And I said, listen, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to get our church to pray. His name is Mr. Casey. And pray for his dear wife as she's trying to help him. And uh, he just can't see very good. And, uh, and then also, tomorrow night, y'all remember Sunday we had the Atlanta City Rescue Mission here. Brother Darvin Hill and his wife and their members, I believe, up the road at Kingsway. And uh, he said, Preacher, I'm going to tell you, I enjoyed Sunday school. He said, I sat in a class that had the, had the presence of God in Sunday school. And you know how sometimes Sunday school can get out the banks and it can get a little loose and 
uh, everything going on but the right thing. But he said, I want to tell you, it was wonderful. And he said, your church is one of the friendliest churches I've been in. Herbert Hitson and uh, others said, preacher, your church. I said, it ain't my church. It's his church. But they said, that's one of the friendliest churches I've ever been in. And listen, it ought to be our testimony because these are God's people. And God's people are the best people this side of heaven. Uh, can I get an amen right there? But uh, I talked to Brother Hill and I said, we'd love to come minister. And I called him just to thank him. And he said, well, I had a cancellation Thursday night. He said, I need a preacher. I said, I'm in. So uh, I'm going to go. And Lord willing, uh, Brother Carl Davis, y'all know the new man that just joined that was 37 years as an addict. And uh, God saved him by his wonderful grace. Well, I'm going to take him. And I've invited about 15 men, but every one of them's got to wash the dog and wash the car and, and all that. So I'm going tomorrow night, and I wish y'all would pray for me and uh, ask God, because I want to go and see those men get help and uh, get some, get some uh, salvation for their souls. How many of y'all could see Mount Pleasant going down to the rescue mission and singing sometimes? How, how, couldn't y'all see that? I could see taking our choir down there. there and uh, we did it when I was in North Georgia. We were five minutes from downtown Chattanooga. We'd take our choir and stand in that old uh, cement block room. It looked like a big old Sunday school room. And, buddy, we'd sing. And those old fellas would get to singing. And heaven would come down. It was a great, great service. I can see Miss Bobby Fay and Jamie Fay singing out there and giving God the glory. And, uh, and uh, I can see uh, all of you being part of that. So I'm praying God will open our doors. You remember our theme in 2023. What is our theme? Send me in 2023. And so I hope you'll pray that God will send us, pray for the uh, South Dakota trip, and then we still have other mission trips that we're looking at doing. How many have unspoken requests tonight? Anybody else? All of us do. God bless you, every one of you. And uh, anybody have a, 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 a prayer request you'd like to make mention tonight? We'll write it down, and at the end of the service, we will carry them before the Lord. Yes, ma'am, Shirley. Sinus cavity. Yeah. All right, we'll pray for this granddaughter. Somebody else tonight? Yes, ma'am. All right, that reminds me to ask y'all to pray. How many of y'all remember Miss Lorraine Graham? Y'all remember Earl and Lorraine? Well, if you have a minute, I want you to call Lorraine, all right? I know y'all got, got minds like steel tra a trap, but the weakest ink is better than the strongest mind, all right? So write some of this down. Call Lorraine Graham and encourage her. She would be mighty blessed. Yes, ma'am. Amen. All right, let's do pray for. Y'all heard that problem started with the COVID shot, so there's a lot to pray for. I know there's conspiracy everywhere, but uh, we're just going to trust the Lord. A amen. Miss uh, uh, Betsy.
let's just pray to that end that uh, they didn't see anything or don't see it again. Yes, ma'am, Miss Casey. Wow. What's his first name? Jaden. All right, let's pray for Jaden and his uh, recovery journey. Yes, sir, Brother Ronnie. We sure will. We'll pray for her. Anybody else tonight? Brother Allen? Amen. Boy, that's good. It, it, what's, what's her last name? Emily P Powell. Powers? Powell? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to I talked to her mama yesterday and uh Maybe God put it in one of you ladies' hearts to call her mama. I, I talked to her yesterday, and listen, this is a chance for the church to shine and show some grace, and so let's reach out and love on that family and uh, try to get them in. Amen? Anybody else tonight before Brother Eddie comes and sings? Pray for all the Awana tonight and all the youth and all the teen activities. A lot coming up in the days ahead. I do want us to pray for our fifth Sunday. That's Youth Sunday. Our youth are going to come, and they're going to lead singing. They're going to sing. And then we've got a young preacher that will be here to uh, be a blessing to our young people in church. And then Sunday night, we're going over to Rootville Road, and we're going to have a joint service with all the area churches. And I can't wait to hear uh, Dr. Jerry Vines and uh, Emir Canner. Anybody ever heard one of them preach? They are amazing. You got a young preacher, that Emir Kanner, was a, he's a former Muslim that God saved by his marvelous grace. And then Dr. Vines, I believe, is a local, a native of Carrollton, Georgia here. And so it'll be good to hear him. And then he'll be here preaching the first Sunday of June, and I'm excited to have him in this pulpit. Well, I'm glad that God's on this throne. Amen tonight. How many of you are hungry and you need God to speak to your heart tonight? Well, let's just ask God to meet with us, all right? Brother Eddie, you come and you sing tonight. Pray for me and Lou Ann. I sprang this song on her just a little while ago, and so we're going to do something we've never tried this before. I'll tell the world that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed. His name to bear. I'll tell. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Brother Eddie. Turn in your Bible, if, if you have them tonight, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, just one verse, verse 31. Hebrews 11 and verse 31. And when you find your place, if you would turn over to the book of Joshua, chapter number 2. Joshua, chapter 2, and just put a uh, bookmark there. We'll be there in just a minute. I hope that you are growing in your faith. I'm preaching in the book of Hebrews on building our faith, and I hope that you are growing in your faith. Can I get an amen right there? I hope you'll see in church that God specializes in taking uh, and transforming uh, heroes out of zeros. God specializes in changing uh, uh, sinners into saints, and God can do that with your life tonight. Hebrews 11 and verse 31, if you're able, would you stand in honor and reverence for the reading of God's holy word. Hebrews 11. And before I, I read this, I'm reminded, would you pray for a young man? His mother has been visiting our church. And I visited him yesterday. And uh, I asked him, he's real, real reclusive, real shy. And he said, sir, I have Crohn's disease. And I very seldom leave this house. And very shy. But you know what? God is so big. I gave him one of them Mount Pleasant tracks, and I'm praying that God walked in that house with him, and God will open his heart. So I want you all to pray for him. I've got his mother's name, but I want you to pray for that young man at the end of the service. All right, Hebrews 11 and verse 31. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Would you read it together with me? By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Let me read it again for you. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. I want to preach on this thought tonight, Rahab from the guttermost to the uttermost. God took a harlot and put her in the hall of fame. And I was going to preach on if a harlot can, so can you. Amen. If God can take a wicked woman and uh, change her life, he can change your life as well. Let us pray together tonight. Our Father, Lord God, we come in Jesus' name to the throne of grace. God, we need help in this time and hour in which we stand. And Father, tonight we would lean on the Holy Spirit asking you, Father, to fill us afresh and anew. I pray tonight, God, that you'd grant power from on high, that you'd grant unction. God, that you'd breathe upon your people tonight. I pray tonight, God, as we sit before the master's table, God, that you'd take that fresh bread from the oven of faith and put it on the table of grace today. I pray that you'd take that milk and meat of the word and God set it before your people. And I pray for those that are listening by way of the internet, God, that you'd bless them and breathe upon them. And God, that you'd instill great faith and the hearers tonight and we'll give you thanks honor and glory in Jesus name we pray amen and amen you may be seated I want you to think about this harlot by the name of Rahab God is in the business of changing lives it was 1725 when a godly mother gave birth to a baby boy just like Hannah in the Old Testament this mother dedicated her baby boy to the Lord praying that one day he would fill the pulpits in the native land of England. This faithful mother began instructing this baby boy in the Bible and teaching him the hymns of Isaac Watts. But tragically, this mama died when this little boy was six years old and it wasn't long that this boy's life began to spiral out of control. I read that the boy's daddy remarried a lost woman and his life spiraled even farther out of control. He was sent away into boarding school and from there he went downhill as he plunged into sin. And leaving boarding school, he decided to become a sailor just like his drunken daddy. And he fell into the grips of profanity and sensuality, got into the the dregs of sin and alcohol, and uh, I, became, I read that later he became a dissenter and a deserter from the Navy, the British Navy, and uh, when they captured him, he was flogged until the blood streamed down his back, and he was so hardened in sin that he became involved in the African slave trade, and 
Then going on from bad to worse, he actually fell and became a slave himself. Here's a boy that his mama prayed for him. Here's a boy that God, uh, God uh, began to work in his life, but he turned away from God. And I read that he became a slave himself. And the woman that he was sold to was glorying in her power over him. And she would make him depend on the crumbs that she would throw underneath the table. Then he said in his own words, he said it happened on in 1748 when he found himself sailing homeward on a ship called the Greyhound. He said a fierce storm arose so violent that it shook the mariners and the crew that were on board. And everyone aboard said it was certain that that was the hour they were going to sink to their desperation and death. He said in the midst of that storm as I resisted and battled against God, he said I turned to God and called out to God in mercy. And in that moment of mercy, mercy he said on may on on march the 10th 1748 that's when old john newton sought mercy and found it he's the man that would go on later to write that song amazing grace how sweet the sound i'm preaching tonight about a harlot who was changed by the marvelous grace of god when you think about this bible god specializes in hard cases and it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or where you've been there's a god in heaven who can step across barriers there's a God in heaven who can get to where you're at here was a woman by the name of Rahab living in a sinful city she was a dirty woman she was a defiled woman she was a doomed woman but God in his mercy set his eyes on that little wayward sinner God chose to save her what can you say when God does things like save a wretch like John Newton what else can you say when God saves a wretch like a Rahab the harlot it is nothing short of the amazing grace of God. You're here tonight, and maybe you're wondering, to wonder what God could do with my life. I want to say tonight, as I begin to preach, I want you to hear the theme of Hebrews chapter number 11. It is the theme of faith, by faith, by faith. And listen, if you're going to please God, it will be by faith. That's the only thing that changed uh, this harlot. I want you to see some things in this Bible here. The story of Rahab teaches us that no Nobody is too far gone for God to rescue. Nobody is too deep in sin for God to cleanse and use for His glory. Let me give you a couple of things by way of introduction. Think about the person of faith, Rahab the harlot. The Bible says in verse 31, by faith the harlot Rahab. Let me just say that her description is, uh, this is surprising. To see that a harlot is named among the hall of faith is surprising to you and I. But I promise you one of these days... Uh, when we stand in heaven, they might be some to look at you and they might look at me and say, boy, I'm surprised to see them there. I knew them on earth and what a shock it is to see us in heaven. But her faith and her description is describing. Listen, every one of us have a sinful and a sordid past, but all it takes is by faith one trip to the cross of Calvary to believe in that Son of God who shed His blood on that cross. All it takes is for one sinner to bow low beneath the flow of that cross uh, and let that wonder working power of that blood transform them. I'm looking out into the sea of believers who have been to bloody Calvary by faith and you have heard that on that hill far away that old rugged cross held the son of God uh, who was the ransom, the redemption and the payment for our sins. I'm telling you her description is surprising but her identification is shocking. The Bible tells us about Rahab that she was a Gentile. She was literally an Ammonite that was destined for destruction. You remember when Moses was still leading the nation of Israel and then Joshua came on the scene and God said, I want you to go into the land of Canaan and utterly destroy. I mean destroy them and wipe them out. You say, what was that? That was God getting in a killing mood because he wanted to destroy every reprobate and every sinner, every rebellious sinner under the under the face of heaven because of their wickedness God was driving them out
out of the land of Canaan. And listen, here's a woman who was doomed and she was dirty and defeated. And her identification, it is interesting. But you know what's interesting, church? Before you read five verses in the opening of the New Testament, you begin to read about a woman by the name of Rahab. You see, God saved that little woman by the name of Rahab and he put her in the lineage of the Messiah. Rahab married a man by the name of Salmon. And they had a boy and his name was Boaz. And boy, I'm telling you, it's going to get better as you and I begin to journey through that book of Ruth. Uh, that, Ru- that book of redemption. You see, Ruth married a man by the name of Boaz. But let's go back to Rahab just a minute. Rahab would get saved and she would marry a man from the uh, nation of Israel named Salmon and they had a boy his name was Boaz and Mo, uh, Boaz would marry a Gentile woman by the name of Ruth and Boaz and Ruth had a little boy named Obed and Obed would have a boy named Jesse and Jesse had a little boy that they named David who became the king of Israel. I want to tell you tonight that God can use anybody he chooses to. Think about that big city of Jericho. And there was one person that had faith in Almighty God. But then there's the popularity of her faith. Her faith in God and the God of Israel was not very popular. I want you to think about Israel. They crossed the Jordan River. And they're standing outside as we saw Joshua, the walls of Jericho. And inside that city of Jericho, there is a sea of sinners. And there's only one that had faith in a God Unless it's the Lord, tell him you're calling back. Amen. Uh, unless it's pizza, tell him go ahead and deliver it. It'll be here in about 30 minutes, all right? But I want you to think about Rahab. She was the only one in that whole city that had faith that a God in Israel was coming to destroy her little town. Her faith was not popular. She was the only one that believed. But then you think about the purifying of her faith. Look in Hebrews eleven thirty one. By faith, the harlot Rahab. You see, Rahab had an ugly past full of sin but by faith Jehovah God had cleansed her up I just want to say tonight sin always leaves scars and even though these scars remain the blood of Jesus removes our sins aren't you glad some of us have wandered out into the fields of sin and it never pays to sin sin always costs you more than you're willing to pay and many of us have scars and today they have outward scars but I'm going to tell you they're inward scars that will mark every one of us scars of sin but I'm glad there's a blood that washes away our sins and those scars may remain and those marks may remind us but there's a fountain that's filled with blood can I get an amen tonight well I want to show you some things turn back with me to the book of Joshua and chapter number two I want you to see Rahab's story I want you to notice in Joshua 2 in verse number one First of all, I want you to notice the radical change that Rahab experienced. Notice this radical change that Rahab experienced in Joshua 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, And and Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into the harlot's house uh, and named Rahab and lodged there. I want you to think about Joshua sending two spies into the city of Jericho to see what they were up against. You say, didn't he learn the lesson when Moses sent the ten spies in there and they came back with an evil report? Listen, there are two mistakes that you can make when you're dealing with an enemy. You can either underestimate your enemy or you can overestimate your enemy. And I want to remind you tonight that we have an enemy. We don't wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this present world. And we would be wise to, to, to evaluate our enemy. Joshua sends two spies into the city of Jericho. And I want you to notice where they ended up. They didn't end up at the rescue mission. They didn't end up at the little Baptist preacher's house. They didn't get to stay in the prophet's chambers from that first Baptist church there. They didn't have a first Baptist church there in Jericho. But they ended up at a harlot's house by the name of Rahab. You say, preacher, I wonder was that an accident? I'm going to tell you up in heaven, there is an unseen hand that is driving this ship. Can I get an amen right there? You say, preacher, you just don't 
don't know what's happening, I'm going to tell you there is an unseen hand that is sovereignly and divinely and wonderfully leading his people along. And you can see them two spies as they climb the wall and they slip into that city and they try to be uh, indiscreet. And they end up going into the house of a harlot. Well, that's not the place that a Christian ought to be. I just imagine those two Christian boys out on visitation and they knocked on her door and she said, fellas, come on in. And they said, let me tell you about the God of Israel. And if you notice in your Bible, look in verse number 9 and 10. Let me just summarize. She said, fellas, I've already heard about him. And I knew that the land, the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us. She said, I've already heard about your God. In verse number 10, she said, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. And I believe about that time those boys said ma'am there ain't nobody like him amen and she said we've already heard about him your terrors fallen upon us and we've heard what he did down in Egypt we heard what he did over in the Red Sea how did they hear that word travels mighty fast it travels faster than in a Baptist church I'm going to tell you that gossip circuit's got a fast route but I'm going to tell you news about God began to travel around the countryside and they said have you heard about the God of Israel, his name is Jehovah. When Rahab, uh, listen, I'm telling you, Rahab uh, had decided it was time to put her trust in the Lord. Notice this radical change. Let me just say her lifestyle change. There were no Bibles in Jericho. There were no prophets in Jericho. There was no life way. Uh, uh, there was no scripture truth down in life way. There was no sword of the Lord newspapers in life way. How many of y'all remember the sword of the Lord newspaper? Amen. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if you miss that you missed a blessing right there there were no Bibles there were no preachers there were no meetings about revival but yet she heard the word about God listen I'm telling you even that boy that I spoke to yesterday that said he has Crohn's disease uh, I'm telling you there's a God in heaven that can breathe a word into his heart and breathe a word into his ears about a God who made the sun and the moon and the stars uh, listen Rahab's lifestyle changed uh, here's somebody that somehow uh, news came to Jericho about a God uh, who had broken Israel out of Egypt. And I just wonder, church, Rahab heard about a God that broke the children of Israel out of Egypt. And I just wonder if Rahab thought, if anybody's in bondage, Lord, it's me. If anybody's trapped in sin, it is me. I feel like the people of Israel, when they were trapped in bondage, and listen, I believe that lifestyle of sexual sin, it is a lifestyle of bondage, it is a lifestyle style of wickedness uh, it is a lifestyle of Satan and I just wonder if she had a fleeting thought I wonder if that God could break me out of my lifestyle and somewhere along the way I believe Rahab made a decision I'm gonna trust in their God and uh, listen her lifestyle changed and let me just remind you old things pass away and behold all things are become new but her language changed. Look in Joshua 2, verses 8 through 11. Notice she calls the God. Uh, she calls him the Lord. And verse number 8, And before they were laid down, she came up unto them unto the, upon the roof. And verse 9, And she said, This is her personal testimony. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how that the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard those things, uh, what does the Bible say, children? Our hearts did melt. Uh, neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Uh, you know what happened about that time? Uh, it's a blessed are those that are poor in spirit. I want to tell you, God took every Every ounce of pride, God took every ounce of uh, of every ounce of uh, uh, you can do it. Uh, God took every ounce of their own ability and He squished it, and there remained no courage in them. You know what God has to do to get some people's attention? He's got to take the shackles out from under them. He's got to take the crutches of finances out from under them. He's got to take everything away from people sometimes before He can get their attention and cause their heart to see that they stand utterly. Bad 
bankrupt before God. Uh, I believe Rahab began to fear. I wonder God can break me out. And she said, neither did any more courage remain in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, look at what she said, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. How could, how could a harlot uh, named Rahab say that? I believe she had been down to them, them religious temples in uh, Jericho. And I believe she had heard them phony little TV preachers. Uh, I believe she heard them phony little Facebook prophets begin to try to witness and testify. But she never seen the grace and the glow and the glory of God. Uh, here's two spies in there and they had the glow and the glory and the grace of God on them. How could Rahab, the, uh, living in Jericho, have heard all of these things? Well, one commentator suggested that her home would have been a place of great gossip. Can you imagine this harlot opening her house up to the men of that city? And uh, those men of that city come in, and man, they were in sin. And yet they said, have you heard uh, what happened in Egypt? Rahab said, no, tell me. And they said, there's a God, and they call him Jehovah. He marched down into the city of, 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 uh, uh, of Egypt and sent a man by the name of Moses saying, let my people go. And another man came in and said, did you hear what happened at the Red Sea when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and their backs were against the Red Sea? I can hear Rahab saying, tell me more about this God. Uh, what happened when this God's people were stranded at the Red Sea? I'm telling you, God parted the waters and God led them over on dry ground. You know what's happening right here? God is cultivating a thirst for faith. And I believe the more Rahab heard, uh, you know what the Bible says? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, listen, you want to grow strong in your walk? You want to grow strong in your recovery? You want to overcome sin and self and the devil? You need a faith like a rock of ages. Uh, you need faith in in the rock of ages and a faith that will see you through the storms and listen I believe her home became the home of gossip and the more men that came in and began to tell about this God of Israel I believe God began to give her a thirst in her heart uh, I believe God began to work inside of her listen faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God uh, and that faith was a gift that God began to sprinkle and to drop into the heart of that harlot listen she had heard about the person of God but then she heard about the power of God how that he dried up the Red Sea in verse 10 that's what caused the citizens of Jericho to faint and instead of the city surrendering and repenting one one little harlot said I'm going with God Listen, do you remember the day that God gave you the faith to believe that on that hill far away stood an old rugged cross? Do you remember that day that was not your faith? Now faith is the substance of things for, it's the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. I read about that old black preacher by the name of Uncle Buddy Robinson. Uncle Buddy Robinson said, I was a hard sinner. Nobody could tell me about God. He said, one day I went to a Methodist preacher preacher and I heard that Methodist preacher preaching on heaven till I wanted to go to heaven he said then I went down and heard a Baptist preacher and heard him preaching on hell and till I thought I was going to hell and then I went down there to that there altar and he said when I got up yonder from that altar I couldn't read my name in boxcar letters but I could read my title to a clear mansion in the sky I'm going to tell you that's what happens when a sinner gets saved they hear the word of God and they believe the word of God do you have a problem tonight is there an obstacle is there an addiction is there a problem before you there's a God in heaven God marched into the city of Jericho that walled city God marched right into that little harlot's house uh, who was dirty defiled and doomed God said if you will believe I'll grant you salvation and I want you to notice the radical change in her life it changed her lifestyle it changed uh, her language but it changed her livelihood look back in verse number six but she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with what church stalks of flax which she laid in order upon the roof I began to read about this flax Flax was laboriously gathered by industrious women and it was laid out on the tops of the roofs or the tops of the houses to dry 
for use in spinning and weaving. And working with flax, I began to read, was hard work and it was honorable work. And it was considered to be respectable work and a respectable trade. And uh, you see, Rahab was no longer a vile woman. But I believe Rahab had left the paths of sin that she had traveled so long. And now she had began a new career. But notice, secondly, her biblical faith that she exemplified. The Bible says, the Bible teaches us that Rahab had a courageous faith. The whole city of Jericho knew that the God of Israel was coming towards them, but only one believed that, that God was going to destroy them. Rahab's faith was a concerning faith. Listen, she had faith that really believed that, that there was a God in heaven who could deliver. Look at Joshua chapter 2 and verse 12. Here's evidence of her faith. She said, Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token. Do you see what she's saying here to the spies? Uh, she said, I've been kind to you, and I believe your God is going to come in and destroy the city. And I believe your God is the God of all creation. And she was saying, I want you to show kindness, the kindness kindness of God to my father's house and listen that's real faith that's evidence of faith when you get saved you get concerned about others I want you to notice prophetically the time clock is ticking one of these soon days all this chaos that you're seeing it's going to spiral and it's going to pro, uh, uh, propel them into the great tribulation we see there's no leadership in the world we see that the world is looking for a man we're about to step into the book of Daniel in the new f near future and I'm about to show you how that God is going to bring that man of sin upon the stage of time and eternity but yet the ancient of days that stone that was cut out of the mountain he's going to come and he's going to crush the empires of this world and set it straight but you know evidence of faith it is concern for those that are lost I don't know if you saw yesterday on the news, all of those teenagers up there in Chicago that beat up that uh, little young couple, that 19 and 20 year old, walking the streets of Chicago and they beat them and they took their, their jewelry and they took even their shoes and they left them laying there bloody on the sidewalk. I'm going to tell you there's a God in heaven that's going to settle the score one of these days. But every one of them thugs, uh, every one of them gangbangers, every one of them dopers and prostitutes that did that, I'm going to tell you they, they don't want to go to hell and I wouldn't wish them to go to hell for nothing. We need to pray that God uh, would send a holy heat wave of revival to sweep across the city of Chicago and let it begin right here in Carrollton. Can I get an amen right there? Rahab's faith was courageous and it was concern she said uh, when your God comes to destroy would you give me a true token that this house will be saved in verse 12 give me a true token now she had covenant faith as well covenant a uh, covenant is simply an agreement a contract between two parties uh, and there are certain conditions and look at verse number 18 these boys said ma'am this scarlet cord in your window that you're letting us down they said when we return if you be sure that you're hanging that scarlet cord out your window when we come to destroy this city when we see that cord in your window everybody that is in your house is going to be spared it wasn't a blue cord it wasn't a yellow cord it wasn't a green cord or a purple cord it was a scarlet cord it was a red cord and I'm going to tell you that is a picture it is a type is an illustration of the blood of the lamb for when Moses said when I see the blood uh, when God said to Moses when I see the blood uh, I will pass over you I want to say the only way to be safe is to have the blood upon your soul and those two spies said here's your true token when we come to duke it out and destroy this city if that car scarlet thrower, uh, cord is hanging in the window there in the household they shall be saved. And I want you to notice the personal influence that Rahab extended. Look back in Hebrews 11 and verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. That's only part of the story. Let me just say domestically Rahab's son was Boab. But nationally Rahab's seed was of the seed of Christ. You know Rahab went from the guttermost to the uttermost. 
If God could take a harlot, cleanse her in the scarlet, and make her a sinner, if God could take her from the house of shame and put her in the hall of fame, wonder what God could do in your heart if you would open your heart and allow the grace of God. The other morning, I was sitting in the gym, and uh, my, my, I was having some trouble. I'm on, I got on some new medicine, and man, it caused my feet to swell, and I couldn't do my normal routine, but there's a God in heaven who makes no mistakes. I went up there and sat down in that sauna. Man, it was waxing hot inside of there, and I was sweating blazes, and all of a sudden, the doors opened. This big old boy with a bun on his head and a, and a, and a ponytail on the back of it, and uh, he sat down, and he had his phone, and I thought, man that thing will melt in here and I wax bold and I said boy it sure is hot in here he said yes sir I said but it's hotter in hell and you don't want to dare die and go to hell he thought boy some introduction that is right there I've been praying for Bob I've been praying for a burden I've been praying for an opportunity and I've been praying that God would give me boldness and I wax strong and I said sir are you a Christian and here's what he said he said no sir but my mom and daddy are I said well that's fine and well he said we're from Honduras and we hadn't been here too long I said well I want you to know there's a God in heaven that made everything that you see that led you from Honduras all the way to this sweaty little sauna right here at the sportplex for me to tell you about the wonderful grace of God and I shared with him my story how that I once was lost but now I'm found and I said there's a God in heaven who has set his eyes on you what's your name he said my name is Abner I said Abner let me tell you about the hill of Calvary God God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and Jesus Christ died for our sins was buried and rose again he said I've heard that I said have you ever believed that and received that and he began to back away and I said listen you're you're rejecting the free gift of God he said well just not now and I said listen today's the day of salvation he said I understand I understand I said well what you're doing is you're saying no thanks to God and he says wow since you put it like that he said, but I'm just not ready, but would you pray for me? So I want you to pray for this man by the name of Abner. Abner's working at Southwire, got it made in the shade. And I said, buddy, you've come from a land that had poverty stricken to a land that's got plenty and pleasures of sin. But there's a God in heaven who has sovereignly and divinely led you into this little sweaty room where there's a Baptist preacher trying to tell you about somebody who can change your life. Well, I saw him yesterday, and he tried to avoid me, but I went up to him and gave him a fist bump, and I told him that God was still after him. You know, if God could walk down into the city of Jericho, that city full of sin, that city that God was about to destroy, don't you know God could walk inside of your life? This little girl by the name of Rahab might have been the nastiest, might have been the dirtiest, but God said, if you'll believe, I can change you. She might have been hooked on every addiction that the city of Jericho had to offer, but I believe somewhere in the midnight hour, she, de she decided, I need a God who can break me out of my sin and my shame. And listen, he changed her from the guttermost to the uttermost. That could be you if you'd only believe by faith in the Son of God. Listen, it don't take anything to be a sinner. You get no notoriety but to be a child of God and to live by faith. That's the ones that makes a difference. That's the mamas and the grandmamas. That's the women that make a difference. I'm going to tell you, that's the men that make a difference. We have a church here and God meets with us, but it's one thing to be a hearer of the word it's a far different thing to be a doer of the word. To take the message of the gospel to the streets of Carrollton, have a gospel crusade at the manor house. Three people got saved yesterday. Isn't that wonderful? I mean to have the guts and the faith to believe that God could take a nobody, send him to the city of Atlanta to talk to men who are just like Rahab, trapped in sin. I got news for them. I got something that they better watch out. I might as well wear a placard that says, armed and dangerous. I'm going loaded with the dynamite tomorrow night. What I'm trying to say tonight is God can use you. God wants the faith that was in that harlot Rahab to be in your heart. And he wants you to share it with others because others need to know about a God who can save anybody. Nobody's too far gone. Nobody's too far deep in sin. 
God can use you. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Let's pray at 726. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for all these that we mentioned earlier. I want you to pray for Larissa Altman as she goes and has that heart cath in the morning. Listen, her and Kyle, they want to join this church. They said, we really believe God wants our family to grow up and get rooted here at, at Mount Pleasant. And uh, I believe they'd be all right with me sharing that. There's others. I talked to a man who's a clinical psychiatrist. And I said, boy, I need you at that church because they some people. They need to lay down on the couch and talk to you for a while. Amen. And he laughed. He's a Sunday school teacher. He loves God. Well, I invited him to one or two of the best classes we got here. And I said, you ought to come this Sunday and just see what God's a doing. I said, we all time need more helpers. I want you to pray for these that have been visiting. Some wanted to come tonight. Some have come tonight. And I really believe God's going to do a great work. Listen, the time is short. So whatever we're going to do, we better do it now. Don't you slow up with them ladies back there, Miss Patty. Brother Gail, don't you let her take the gas off the pedal, all right? You tell her to keep the gas on the pedal. Don't worry about us men. I believe God's a stirring in the heart of the men of this church. And I really believe God's going to do a great, great work. You say, who's he going to use to lead us? Ain't no telling who God might put in a little men's ministry to stir these mighty men at this church. Sunday night, I want you to pray. We're going to have a business meeting. Man, there's some things that need to happen in God's house. Would y'all let your carpet and the paint and all that go bad in your house? No. Well, we need to talk about some of them things on Sunday night. And so I want y'all to help me pray that God will give us wisdom on what to do in the days ahead. This place ought to be the most beautiful place in this whole area. Can I get an amen right there? I mean God's house. If you go to Home Depot every weekend, Lord of mercy, this place ought to shine like the brightness of heaven. And so we're going to pray that God allow us to do some things without putting us in the poorhouse. And, and uh, I believe God's going to bless. Amen. Well, let's pray. Brother Eddie, would you pray and ask God to meet the needs of these requests tonight?